It's even creepier when you realize that Dr. Frankenfurter and Nigel Thornberry might have just been different incarnations of it. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. Today I'm going to be talking about the 1990 Stephen King adaptation, It. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie-related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. All of my reviews include a breakdown of the pros and cons, my rating, and some tailored film recommendations, so be sure to watch through to the end of this video for all of that extra content. It stars Tim Curry, John Ritter, and Tim Reed, and was directed by Tommy Lee Wallace. It tells the story of a group of kids who encounter a murderous clown named Pennywise, played unsettlingly by Tim Curry, who's been terrorizing the children of Derry, Maine for hundreds of years. Our protagonists endeavor to kill Pennywise, and we see their journey both as kids and adults. It was the fourth Stephen King novel I ever read. I became a fan of his while I was in junior high and plowed through Cujo, Christine, Pet Cemetery, It, The Shining, and Misery in only a few months. Of those first few King novels I read, It was the most enveloping. Its length was a bit intimidating at first, but the world of It and Derry were incredibly enthralling. There's just so much depth to the novel, providing for memorable characterization and many side stories that enhance the history of the fictional town. That depth is perfect for a novel, but makes it near impossible to create an equally enthralling cinematic adaptation. I first saw this miniseries version of It a year or so after I read the book, so I was already a teenager. To be honest, I wasn't super impressed at the time, but I found it a decent enough watch. It's been about 15 years since I read the novel, so I can't compare this to the source material very well anymore, but that's probably for the best. Even with a three hour long adaptation, there's no way to satisfyingly replicate the story and atmosphere of the immense novel. That being said, this version of It settles right in the middle ground. There are some aspects of the story that it handles remarkably well, like the kids and character setups, and others that are downright terrible, like the adults and the finale. I also don't understand the decision to round the 27 year cycle to 30 years. As everybody's already likely aware, the first chapter of this miniseries is much better than the second. The Young Losers Club actually do a very good job, hitting both the right emotional and story notes. It's typical for child actors to be the poorer aspect of a film, but it's the adult Losers Club actors that are fairly cringeworthy here. And don't even get me started on that damn ponytail. The first chapter is infused with creepiness, much of which is due to Tim Curry's performance as Pennywise. This movie doesn't have quite the same chilling effect as the novel, but at least it partially succeeds at setting the atmosphere. The introduction and characterization of all of the kids might be the most successful part of this adaptation, and this effectively pulls the audience into the story and invests you in their plight against it. The non-linear narrative that cross-cuts between the Young Losers Club and their adult versions stays true to the book and is done fairly well, but the adults drag things down quite a bit with terrible acting and cheesiness, especially during the second chapter. Rewatching this film now is interesting to me on a number of levels. I now live and work near Derry. I mean, Bangor, Maine. So there are locations and homages that I pick up on and can relate to their real life counterparts, which introduces a new element of reality to it all for me. Additionally, after having watched the remake of it, I feel I have a slightly different perspective on this version now. The remake is certainly superior, and I have no real nostalgic tie to this miniseries, but there's just something about this version that's endearing. Maybe it's the fact that the chronology stays pretty true to the book here, kids in the 60s, adults in the late 80s, but this one just seems more representative of the characters. Oh well. Beep beep, Richie. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons. Pro number one is definitely the kids. They don't provide world-class performances or anything, so maybe they only stand out by comparison to their adult counterparts, but they're always the most enjoyable part of this movie for me. They've got good chemistry together and just feel very believable, not only as kids, but as a ragtag group of friends too. The scene where they're all building the dam together in the barrens always jumps out to me because they just seem like a real group of kids playing in the woods. 
The second pro is Tim Curry's performance as Pennywise. He is equal parts unsettling and menacing. He gives the type of performance where his mere presence on screen is enough to make your hair stand on end. Add to that the voice and the circumstances in which he appears, and it's no surprise that he's made an entire generation afraid of clowns. As far as cons go, by far the biggest issue has got to be the adult performances. They're honestly really hard to watch. You'd think the child actors would be the roughest part of this movie, but it's truly difficult to overstate just how unnatural and stilted the Adult Losers Club is. The chemistry that the kids had together is completely gone here, and really the only performance that's remotely reasonable is Tim Reed as adult Mike Hanlon. Con number two stems from the first con, and is really just the whole second chapter or half of this mini-series. It exclusively focuses on the Losers Club as adults, so that's certainly at hand in its subpar quality, but there's even something cheesy and off beyond the acting. I guess I can't quite put my finger on it, but the made-for-TV quality really shines through, so the finale isn't nearly as satisfying or exciting as you'd hope. I'm gonna give it three out of five paws. Tim Curry's creepy, the kids do a pretty good job, and Stephen King's source material's great, but without a nostalgic connection to this miniseries, even Pennywise can't keep it afloat. I would recommend it to fans of Stephen King or people who have a nostalgic connection to the miniseries already. Obviously, if you like Stephen King's writing, then you'll probably love the source material for this one too. It does change a number of things from the book, but manages to capture some elements fairly well too. If you're somebody who watched this as a kid and was terrified by Pennywise, definitely give it another watch. It probably won't scare you as much as you remember, but the nostalgia will help you out. If you liked it, I definitely recommend the 2017 remake of it or probably more accurately now, IT Chapter 1. It's the same basic story, of course, but I think nearly every element has been improved. It does solely focus on the Young Losers Club, though. If you liked the 80s, 90s cheesiness to the horror, make sure you check out the original Pet Cemetery movie. It was another Stephen King adaptation from the same era and certainly has a similar feel. And sticking with Stephen King, if you like the camaraderie among the kids, I suggest you give Stand By Me a watch. It's not horror, but it's a really good coming of age movie. All right, a couple questions for you guys. Number one, have you seen it? If so, what'd you think of it? And number two, are you afraid of clowns? Be sure to leave your answers in the comments below so we can get a discussion going. All right, so if you got some enjoyment, insight, or information out of this review, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe while you're at it to see more videos like this. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies, the way life should be.